once again another unscripted electronics video. Get this out of the way. Okay, so today's project. is creating a starter instrument panel for a early 70s pickup truck. Turn it on, start it, it's accessories. Now, of course got the switches, the button, at a auto place and uh, the plate came from actually seven inch LCD screen that I used for a day of the project uh, probably a year or so ago but on the bottom here this metal plate it's acting like a heat sink for the screen that was in here so what I did I had two I had two of these and so I took one took the plate off that's what that is makes, good, makes for a good foundation for an instrument panel so since this is going to an automobile, so that's kind of wire. Of course, you don't want to use like little Dupont wires. You want to use something heavy gauge. Now, remember, I'm not an electronics expert at all. I'm just kind of winging it. So, what I did was a little hair dryer that no longer functions and snips it up. There is your heavy gauge wire. Now I'll take this. Uh, need three of these. And that can cause a problem. I'm trying to find things to actually fix something. I need to get some more wire strippers, but you know, I've had these for years and they work. I think, he's, I, think I got these at Radio Shack before they cease to exist. Or they're owned by. A UK company now. I'm not sure. Is that right? Either there's like a company in the UK that owns the rights to either Tandy or Radio Shack or um, TRS-80, maybe. I'm not sure. That's one. anyway so yeah back years ago you could go to Radio Shack and just get you know all the uh, the way all the parts you needed for something like this so it does seem that for some things the Radio Shack was kind of expensive I think their batteries were extra expensive I remember right. Unless you're like on some kind of 
had some kind of battery club or something. But if you wasn't on the battery club, you didn't get the good deals on the batteries. I, if I remember right, it's, it's been a while. debating about how to wire up the accessory switch here because the diagram for the wiring and the ignition switch on the that old 70s truck is not exactly accurate. Probably everybody watching this video has done stuff like this or knows how to do it, but some people don't. You know? Now, I can use these to crimp them, but I like something a little bit more. Sturdy, I guess. But Look at the difference, you know, which one's going to do a better job, probably this one. Uh, now, got to put on a... a blade in, that will actually go into the connector on the wiring harness, so I don't have to cut any of those wires, you don't want to do that. Uh, okay, so Probably taking a vacation. Let's see. Oh, there's 
there. Okay, so this is going to be for the battery cable for the accessories. And I'm not sure what the way that's currently hooked up. The, the diagram isn't exactly correct that I've got that I was able to find on the internet for the wiring harness. So, uh, what is it? I think it's. Ignition three and accessory ACC, right? On the diagram, it looks like they're connected together. I'm not sure, but what I'm going to do is hook them up separately. I'm not going to put heat shrink tubing on those yet. I'll test that out, and then because it's, I might need to put them together because this is the only other switch I got. Is this three way? So, I'll do that. Well, I'm going to make some more cables and uh, I'll talk to you later.